Many breaths in the Lord, you have bestowed upon us, mighty Jehovah, King of all the glory. Yes, mighty Jehovah, God, we are enjoying your goodness, mighty King of all the glory. Thank you for loving us, mighty Jehovah, King of all the glory. Thank you, Jehovah, God, almighty God, oh Lord, oh King of all the glory, immutable God. You remain the same. You are a powerful healer. And forever you remain to be the same. You are omnipotent. And forever you remain to be the same. Omniscient. Oh, King of all the glory. Our attitude towards you may change. Circumstances may change. But you, Lord, you remain to be the same. Oh, King of all the glory. Even if we drift away from you, you still remain to be the same faithful God loving kindness God mighty Jesus oh Lord thank you Holy One thank you Holy One oh God and that's why we surrender everything unto you mighty Jehovah King of all the glory we surrender everything to you Lord mighty God Take all the glory, take all the honor, mighty Jesus, oh mighty Jehovah, King of all the glory, mighty Jehovah God, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord, thank you Holy One, no one can be compared to you, mighty Jesus, no one can be compared to you, mighty Jesus, oh King of all the glory, you are marvelous. You have been so good to us. Yes, my King of Kings. Been good to us, Lord. Oh, my Jehovah King of all the glory. Our purpose and our passion, my Jehovah King of all the glory. Oh, Lord, is to seek you and know you more and more, my Jehovah King of all the glory. From in you we get identity, my Jehovah King of all the glory. Yes, Lord. For the glory, oh God, mighty O Jehovah, King of all the glory, oh mighty God.
stand before us to share God's word this Wednesday. Um, and uh, My name is McNeil and I am saved uh, for those who are visitors or perhaps you're coming for the first time. And, and um, I love the Lord. I just love him for having loved me. And, and uh, it pleases me to stand here tonight to share God's word. We are bringing a close at the series we've been um, sharing every Wednesday from the book of Galatians. And it's been amazing to learn many things from different people. It's been amazing just to learn what the Lord was uh, uh, speaking to the church in Galatia. And the few lessons we can be able to draw there for our living and for our transformation so that we can become Christ-like. So today I do a topic, uh, a little yeast, a little yeast. I'm told little and little, little and a little in English mean two different things. A little means um, of um, good amount, but little means um, on the lower side. Praise the Lord. Are we together? So a little yeast, a little yeast, not, not, not meaning that the yeast is so much, um, but uh, that's what Englishmen say, that uh, a little means of some good amount. So a little yeast, some good amount of yeast. Praise the Lord. Yes, so that's what I'm sharing tonight. And, and um, I read Galatians 5, 1 to 12. Um, it's, um, it's among the very, very many last words of Paul. Uh, of course, there are many more ahead, um, including the ones that uh, our brother was sharing last week concerning living in spirit and, and uh, covering the fruits of the is it the fruit of the spirit and many things that come with uh, us being transformed from deep within so we today we do galatians 5 1 to 12 this was to be done before what was done last week but um, in a way they will not affect each other but as we do this i would love us to uh, reflect back on the things we've learned over and over i hope they've been transforming i hope you've learned and not only learning but there are things you are working on there are things you are endeavoring to think through as you pray and believe God to transform your life. Amen. So we read this scripture. Um, I will read. I will read. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. 
mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You are you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. You are running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Praise the Lord. Good. A little yeast. And today I have many stories, so bear with me. I can say many stories, then we read that, then we pray. Hallelujah. And one of the stories that came across when I was thinking through a little yeast is, is, is a story that happened in... Uh, when I share a story, bear with me. I have many stories, not the ones I've experienced, the ones I've read here and there. So on the night of April 14th to 15th, 1912... I was not in existence, so you can be sure I read that. The world's largest passenger steamship, the RMS Titanic, sank in the Atlantic Ocean after hitting an iceberg during its maiden voyage with approximately 1,500 people still on board. You've heard of the Titanic? Uh, you've watched the movie. I don't know if it's true. I don't know who was taking that video um, when it was sinking then in 1912 for us to watch. But um, this amazing um, big steamship sank after hitting an iceberg and, and it took a very short time before water came over and it sank the whole of it. Now, um, I've not done marine engineering or something, but um, the little physics will say if something is floating on water and there's a hole in, that hole is enough to make it sink. One, it allows water to enter in and when water starts entering in, over and over it gets on board and the, 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 that kind of vessel will become heavy and later would sink. That's basic knowledge. Um, now it's amazing that uh, uh, one of the passengers who was in the first class who is called Dr. George Washington he, he narrates an interesting sad story as to how he had the ship hit the iceberg and then he was curious and in, in, inside him he was like something is wrong then he went at the bay where we have um, what are they called they are called the life savers boats and he was asking one of the stewards What's happening? Is there something wrong? And uh, the steward said, we've not had anything from the captain. Everything is cool. Keep cool, keep cool, relax. We are moving on. But deep within, something told him, something has happened. It is not okay. And then, as in, when he went back soon, he had a command and a voice saying, everybody to the life-saving space. And people ran there. And, and um, people were being thrown in life-savers boats and they were being dropped in the ocean to sail over and over. Apparently, it's inter interesting to note that the story goes down to note that uh, not everyone was saved. Uh, about 20% uh, were able to be um, fit, fit in the life-saving save, boats because they were not enough. And the rest were left to sink down, down, down the Atlantic Ocean. And the rest is a story and a history to read as to how the Titanic sank. Now, a little yeast. Why am I sharing this story? You see, what led to this is not because... Um, um, something, sh somebody was pulling the ship inside the sea and, and uh, or there's a force that was pulling it down which was so powerful and so heavy than the sea it was because the ship hit an iceberg and it leaked just a small bit praise the Lord a little yes, praise the Lord 
Another interesting story that all of you know, if you've been through the 844. Um, you know what happened in 1895 to 1905? We had what we call, um, that is social studies class five. It says that we had people who are called collaborators of the colonial rule, and we had the resistors. So one of the greatest resistors that we had in Kenya, actually it's not only in Kenya, it's bigger in Eastern and also Central Africa, is the Nandi resistance that happened in 1905, 1895 to 1905. And it's not because these guys were special, no. They were ordinary men and Africans. They did not know a bullet, and they did not know what a bullet is, but the white man came with bullets. But mark you, these people held the whites captive and hostage for 10 years. One, two, 10 years is almost the age of pastor's son. Almost that age. I know he's older than that. Um, let's, I, when I come down, he will say I was saying the wrong thing. So he's almost that age. 10 years. And they had nothing. But they held the whites. They were telling them, you can't enter this territory. You can't build that black snake over our territory. It cannot pass. And it did not. Until today, you cannot find a railway in those places. They resisted. But interestingly, the person who was inspiring them to resist, it's not because they were that special. They were working with simple principle. They were working with one person who had believed that they cannot hit us. They cannot. And the white man was so sharp. He just conspired and said, man, come we talk, come we talk. And a guy called Richard Mainsagen, who was a, a, a cop, colonial cop, said, come we talk and we agree on this issue. So when the leader of the Nandi resistance, Koitalel Arab Samoy, appeared to negotiate, he was shot. And that was the end of the resistance. One person, a little, yes, praise the Lord. Um, and not sustaining that, my story is not ending there. What do you need to put a whole big transist on footage so that it can't move? Just take your knife, sharpen it so much, and then go at night and break it. It will not move. You don't need to offload the things to run away with. Just make it not to move by removing pressure in the tires. A little yeast not by cutting the whole of it just a small hole and it leaks and the whole lorry will be down and it will not move a little yeast praise the lord and so this also applies it's a concept that um, we see paul use it a little yeast leaves the whole batch of dough it's what jesus was saying beware of the yeast of the pharisees why? Because every time he would speak something of the kingdom, they would poison it by throwing one, one, one heresy, another lie, another lie, and people would be confused over and over. Praise the Lord. And he was telling them, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees. And so yeast, yeast is just a bacteria. And bacteria multiply so seriously. Actually, I'm, call, I'm told there's something that is called colony count. So if you give them a, 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 what, a conducive environment to multiply, they multiply in a second, they multiply in their millions. So that's how yeast functions. Praise the Lord. It is used, used in small amounts. When you're baking, you don't take a whole tablespoon of yeast to put in a small measurement of dough, you'll not find bread. You'll find a whole hole inside the bread. So, but it's because you put a lot of yeast. Praise the Lord. Now, so that's where we get the title of all this. I was giving you that so that I rush. Now, uh, you've understood the whole sermon and what we are talking about today. Now, Getting saved is an amazing deep spiritual act that brings men in the picture of Jesus Christ. It is a basic transaction that leads to a journey that will make men to grow in faith slowly until they become giants in faith. But however, the journey of rising up is never easy and some would find themselves on paths that slide and they could easily slide off and find themselves off balance. Now, not to mention that only, we all know, as a reminder, that our adversary is always seeking for ways of bringing saints down. He uses the small 
ancient paths to creep over and to try to slide us back to the former life that we would not want to live over again and again. Now you see, for us to be brought down, I've given you many examples, few, not many. Uh, I've given you a little examples. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, um, you don't need to work hard. Ben was teaching us about backsliding. And me, I say, you don't need to work hard to backslide. So you go and pray, God, I want to backslide. Enable me to backslide. Give me the capacity to backslide. By tomorrow, I want to be so decadent. I want to be so bad. I'm very, you don't need to do those things. Just need to stop following Jesus for one minute. Then one hour. Then... Um, the whole day and then a whole week then the whole month and the whole year and you'll be backslidden please the Lord you don't work hard it's just small bit by bit and then all of a sudden you you wonder where am I how did I find myself in this old forest who brought me here and when you check back you find nobody brought you there it was a slight thing a little yeast Praise the Lord. And so we have been purchased by a higher price that cannot be compared to anything. And also a price that can never be afforded so that um, we can be free. But how comes life in this faith becomes so slippery at times? Or is it at times this kind of life of faith becomes so hard until people will tell you, Oh man, McNeil, that life is so hard. I've tried it once, twice. It is not working. What will make it work today? But I love you to know today, church, that big wigs, even in the Bible, found themselves at the trance of a truce when they led them, them, themselves to finish badly, even when they were doing very well. Listen to some examples. You see, Samson was doing well, but one area cut him off and he became an entertainer to the Philistines so that the, the, the Philistines were saying, bring that blind person, let, him, let us go with him to our annual feast. Then they went in the big temple and they were telling, hey, can you see anything? Have you seen a blind person? Go and do it for him. Alikoana jifanya na tupiga. And they, were, they, were, they, wanted, they wanted him to entertain them. And you see, he could do nothing. He was tied. He was bound. And he's been finished. He has no authority. He has no strength. Power went because of one area. Not everything. This guy was just an amazing guy. We would even admire some of these things. Praise the Lord. But now, just one thing brought him down and he finished bad. Actually, even though he died with all Philistines in that area, I don't know. What we think through his life before he died and when he lost power. Praise the Lord. Moses was doing well and was just almost there when one small thing attracted God's judgment and he did not finish the rest to Canaan. We know the story of Moses and how sad it ended. King Hezekiah was doing greatly and he brought a revival in the ancient Judah. He also developed a great army for the Israelites and built the great trench of Hezekiah which is still there till today. I've not been there, just read in Ambiwa. Go to Israel, you'll see the great trench of Hezekiah. He built it when Sennacherib, is it Sennacherib, threatened that he's coming to take over Jerusalem. He really labored and made a trench to fetch water out from the city. Hey, Jerusalem, long time ago, people used to fortify cities. Fortification was building a wall that was so high, and then inside there, people would live. I don't know if they were flats or something, I don't know. I wish I was there to see how those houses used to look like. But they used to fortify cities. And so when a king would want to attack a country, he would come and, um, and you see, they would, they would, uh, as they were living in the city, they would graze outside and even draw water from outside, from the wells outside, which were, were, were constructed outside. So when a king would want to uh, besiege you, the first thing was not to kill you. He was to besiege the city. It's not something that used to happen all over a sudden or one day. No, it could take even a year. So the king would come and um, the attacking king would hold that city captive by 
um, taking over the wells so you cannot access water. All grazing fields so you can't graze your animals. Now life becomes difficult for you. So that one thing, you surrender. Two, if you think you are man enough, come we fight. As even the answers. No, they will begin there. Praise the Lord. And so, um, Jerusalem was fortified and it had a tall wall. Not as Ezekiel did uh, when Sennacherib threatened to take over Judah, he built a trench that would fetch water from outside inside the city. He did so much. Praise the Lord. That's not what I'm preaching today. But I will read. I will read a scripture to explain to you a little yeast. And then I will, I will be back to Galatians to finish my, my sermon. Praise the Lord. Let me show these guys what I'm saying about Hezekiah. Your first kings. Yes, we are there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we there? Please, if I don't read that word, well, that name, bear with me. At that time, Marduk, Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because he had heard of Hezekiah's illness. Hezekiah received the envoys and showed them all that was in his storehouses. Are we together? The silver, the gold, the spices, frankincense, frankincense, mire, gold. Oh, Sam. Ile nye Yesu alipelekewa. Ile manukato ilikuwa frankincense, mire. Ingine? Ah, sawa. Bona sa- so, spices. And the fine olive oil. And his amari and everything found among his treasures. You know what an amari is? An amari is the place where all bullets and all equipment for the army are kept at the police. So you are taking an enemy namambia in your resasi na wanga in in puanga matankas he to kiona metushinda jo tunachomwa tunapiga wa so that's what Hezekiah was doing so he showed them the armory and everything among his treasures so he went to the swimming pool and, and this is my lovely wife over here and, and this is my firstborn and my secondborn these are all mine all by my name and, and, and we praise the Lord hallelujah so he's, he's, sh- he's selling them, telling them all those things and they are seeing and they are enemies and then there was nothing in his palace in his palace or in all his kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them yani kila kitu next then Isaiah, the one Isaiah, son of Amos, the prophet, went to King Ezekiel and asked, What did those men say? And those days prophets were interesting. You just do something, they are not there, and then tomorrow they come. <laughs> so you want that Hey, so Anyway, so what did those men say? And where did they come from? From a distant land, Hezekiah replied. They came from Babylon. Next, we move fast. The prophet asked, What did they see in your palace? They saw everything in my palace. Hezekiah said, There's nothing among my treasures that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. And some. Uh, Hey, the time will surely come when everything in your palace and all that your predecessors have stored up until this day will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Then the last one says, um, are we doing 18? And some of your descendants, your own flesh and blood, who will be born to you, will be taken away and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Praise the Lord. Now, after Ezekiel had achieved all those things, one good thing, just Kadogo. A little yes. And all those things Isaiah tell him, hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah, church. Now the last example is King David, who was the darling of God's heart, did very well and finished well. But in between, he had to pass through a lot of spiritual disarray, a lot of emotional breakdown. A lot of political drama and showdowns with his son Absalom. A lot of military disagreements with Joab. He was battling a murder case in his heart. And also he had relationship cases with Bathsheba and the family. I don't know. The Bible does not tell us what happens. But I'm wondering if that would happen today. The number of cases we'll be having in court today. 
MCC, this guy, it was just one tweak and one twist, a little yeast that led him to live a life. Yes, he died in old age, but suffered too much. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are we together? Good, now we go back to our scripture and context. I was giving you, I was wanted you to know what a little yeast is. It's just a small thing. And we find that the whole Tao is living. And the whole thing, the whole life we are living goes off balance. Just one thing can bring a lot of issues. Now, the scripture we read in Galatians, the scripture we read, uh, is a description of how the Galatian church was allowing a little yeast, or rather small, just a small issue into their lives. An aspect that was bringing wreckage to the amazing faith they had received from the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm sharing three things. Number one, um, we, sh- we need to be careful with our faith practices. That is verse one to verse four. And then number two, Christ is always enough. That is verse five to verse six. And lastly, falling down begins small. That's a little yeast. That's verse seven to verse twelve. And I will be done. And we will pray. And of course, we will take coffee as we fellowship with one another. Praise the Lord. So number one, we need to be careful with our faith practices. Verse 1 to verse 4. Verse 1 to verse 4. Now, the Galatians were mainly Gentiles by origin. Gentiles means they were not Jews by origin. They were Gentiles. And, and um, they were grafted into faith by the Lord Jesus Christ and majorly through Paul the Apostle who was specially sent to them to be the man who was reaching out to Gentiles. They were people who did not know anything concerning the Jewish customs and the ways of the Jews at all. They were naive. They didn't know what is circumcision. What is circumcision on the eighth day? What is Yom Kippur, the festival of the living bread? What is um, the Passover festival? They didn't know all those things. They were just innocent people who who are in the world but received salvation through Apostle Paul as a vessel as Jesus Christ was saving them over and over. They were just innocent people who at the preaching of the gospel to them were simply lost in idolatry and many aspects of pagan worship. And um, that kind of life was garnished with big practices, some kind of witchcraft and some kind of practices which were demonic was the kind of life of the Galatian area. And this Galatian area, I'm talking of um, Pisidia and Antioch, I'm talking of Lystra, if you read the book of Acts, the first missionary journey of Paul, I'm talking of, um, there's a place called D-E-R-B-E, read for yourself, I don't want to say Derbe, Debe. But <laughs> those many places, Galatian was a region, and, and the whole region, it was not a place. And that region, it was a region which was held by th- all those many things. Um, it is the place where we find uh, the proconsul. Praise the Lord. And they get saved. So there was a lot of witchcraft, a lot of dark things. And when they were receiving the gospel, they didn't know anything of the Jewish culture. But you see, Upon the proclamation of the gospel to them, they got saved and were set free from bondage of sin and free from some bad spiritual strongholds that held them captive before. And the people reaching out to them were Jews and majorly a special mention to Apostle Paul, who I've said before, did this on his first missionary journey with the help of Barnabas. And as he was doing this, there are Jews who are of the circumcision group. Actually, Jewish was also called of the circumcision group. Just a small number who are not really practicing the right way, the right faith by arguing out that salvation that came through Jesus was not enough and would only be complete if the Gentiles were circumcised as the Jews were. And so this became a big argument and it led to what we call the Great Council of Jerusalem in Acts chapter 15. It was a great argument. These Jews were saying, these guys cannot be saved. They must be circumcised. They must be circumcised. And Paul is wondering, why are you guys allowing this practice to get into you? Yet in the first place, you got saved. You are filled with the spirit of the living God. Why is it that now we want to practice other things which were not there initially when you got saved? And you see, at the beginning of their life in faith, the Galatians were doing very well and had kept 
their faith in a good way so that they did not struggle with some of these things. This element of circumcision that was being propagated by the Judaizers was a practice that would emasculate the whole faith they were practicing to a whole kind of fake faith that had no basis at all. It was actually a ritual that would complicate life and issues of faith. And so they needed to be careful around this issue as Paul is warning them. You see, the issue of circumcision here has no spiritual act. It has no spiritual impact at all. Actually, the time Paul was going back to Jerusalem, and because he knew the Jews were so aggressive, he had to take one of the Gentiles he was going with and circumcise him first, lest they say, this guy should not enter our territory. So, it had no impact. It had no spiritual impact. It was not making anybody to be saved. It was not adding to any righteousness that they would want. It was not making them more spiritual. It was not accelerating their access to heaven. It was not bringing heaven near to them and taking hell far away from them. No. This whole issue of circumcision was just politics. You see, Paul is so careful and he's telling them, you need to be careful. The freedom that Christ has set us free it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Therefore, stand firm, or rather, be careful. Then, so that you do not, um, so that, and do not let yourselves be burdened again into the yoke of slavery. You see, ritualistic things, religious things, turn up to become slavery. They enslave you. You do them not because they help you. You do them so that you can satisfy a law and tick that you have done something. And so Paul is saying, you must not do all those things. It's not necessary. It will enslave you. And so he's telling them, be careful. Praise the Lord. You see, why is he saying they should be careful? Because now, these guys were tagging salvation to circumcision, which is not true. And see, tagging it over and over and over until generations down, down, that becomes a complicated thing. Perhaps you'll walk in Galatians and say, are you saved? Should I lead you to the Lord? And they said, um, I'm not circumcised and I fear to be circumcised, so I won't be saved. Because that practice would have gotten deep and deep to destroy the fundamental practice of faith. Now, I know we are not Galatians and I know we are not Jews. I understand. But you see, some of the practices we embrace for faith, we need to be careful about them and how we do them. And we need to ask ourselves, what impact do they have to our spiritual lives? Praise the Lord. Some of the practices have no spiritual harm, but in long run, they wipe up the real faith and the real practice of faith that led men to Jesus Christ. And you see, when this happens, we lose track and become religious people, but not Christians who are Christ-like. The only practice that should be the measure of our faith is the practice of Christ-likeness, the practice of becoming like Christ, the uh, practice of imitating Christ over and over. And you see, if I would ask you, have you not seen people branding even their pastor's names that make them look like they are God's? God so when he enters we have to bow oh hallelujah mm, 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 hallelujah and he's a human being have you not seen that have you not experienced all these things so I'm saying these things because I know all of us are vulnerable and we can find ourselves in those extreme ends so that you see you find that this kind of people who God has given responsibility will end up um, being rulers over your life and not servants in the first place as God wanted. You see, others are exalting the kind of emblems and the kind of practices we do in church, yet they are not saved in the first place. Somebody come and says, why do you take Rebena for Holy Communion? And he's not saved in the first place. What are we even talking about in the first place? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! And you see, at times we even defend wrong religion, wrong backgrounds, wrong ways of thinking. And we practice things because we were born to practice.
practice them and we end up just in the wrong way of life we struggle we end up you are 40 years you have no practices to teach your children you cannot explain to your children why you do the things you do because in the first place you do not know where it came from but they ask yourself why do you practice the things you practice is it because pastor said is it because the bible said so we should be careful with our practices because we, we begin slowly let me ask you have you ever learned how to um i think it was my pastor taught us how to develop something that you are not doing for example um i was sharing to the team i work with there's a guy where i come from in the shop he loves saying so he talks and tells him so you talk here mark nilu mekua aja niko poan unenda wapi gani mekua aja ni utafika sa ngapi sasa si ukae pu ni kailisha kidoga ni praise the lord you know if you ask him why are you doing that thing i don't know i even don't know where it began from why are you doing it how do you think we are interpreting it praise the lord and you see he even doesn't know why he's doing it but not that he was born doing he began and then and then then it has become part of him tuonane he's a mechanic tuonane question sawa praise the name of the lord you see practices are very critical ask yourself why do you practice faith the way you practice is it because we we are telling you to do it or because the lord has taught you to do it the way we do it praise the name of the living god we should be careful about our practices because we can begin just a slight behavior justify it season it nicely with the scripture we love hallelujah and we run with it carefully and we can even preach it to people so that we can even have followers practicing the whole of it but you see we could be wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and the second lesson is Christ is always enough from verse 5 to verse 6 i'll read that because i think i love that verse 5 and 6 actually i'm almost done don't worry um for through the spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope and then for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value okay the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love praise the name of the living god now paul goes further to explain to the galatians that the issue of becoming righteous can never be achieved through one practice of circumcision or uncircumcision and so he emphasizes that it has no value at all and people emphasizing on it as though it will help them is a big lie for only through faith shall man wait on god to achieve righteousness and so paul in other words is emphasizing that christ is enough and he is enough for our salvation he is enough for our living he is enough to save us to the uttermost he is enough and he is enough there's nothing else we need anything outside him will bring us trouble but he is enough you have him you have all you got to need or so the all you have for life see anything that pushes christ away from the equation is dangerous any doctrine that pushes christ away from the equation is dangerous any practice you cannot see jesus practicing or we can't learn from him is dangerous so anything that has power of the sorry anything that has the power of the cross fading away in it is equally dangerous and needs to be avoided completely it is in christ jesus that we have all the freedom and by faith as he gives grace praise the name of the lord in one of the classes we do back with the friends i study with the school with called homiletics the art of preaching so um, the professor will say say everything you'll say on the altar read the many scriptures you'll say do everything you'll say but at the end we have to see christ being lifted up because that's the gospel preach everything tell people to be rich do everything you want to rebuke them do everything but at the end christ must be in the equation of that someone 
as you talk about everything you talk you go round and round talk Hezekiah talk Isaiah talk everywhere talk everywhere whether you're drawing your lessons from Genesis 1 alone 1 verse 1 alone at the end of the equation Jesus has to appear in the equation praise the Lord and so Christ is enough through the works that were done on the cross we have all the freedom we need we have all we want and all we will ever want for life nothing has changed since the works of the cross the devil has remained to be the same devil Jesus is the same Jesus and if we were to ask what the problem is then the answer will not that the devil is being too much of strength or is gaining much strength and Jesus is getting less of power but rather the believers themselves Perhaps we are too shallow and timid by falling, failing to understand the greatest fact and truth of all things that Christ is enough and nothing else can satisfy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, at times we get in close too much with the practices that surround us and we begin thinking that we are getting closer to heaven when we practice religion and when we come to church. You see, when you come to church daily and every Sunday and every service, it does not get you closer to heaven. Does it? Does it bring heaven near to your nose? Perhaps it was here now, you see it here on your nose and then here you can be able to swallow it or you can now be able to enter it. No, it cannot! We cannot get better by practicing religion. At times, you see, we fear many things. We fear false teachers and talk about them too much other than drinking and talking about Christ too much. We fear sin too much other than developing a perfect hatred for it. We debate too much about spiritual truths for our self-interests and motives. We at times are not sure whether practicing faith in Jesus is still a genuine deal. And by doing all these things, we have ended up degrading the power and the strength in us. An aspect that still makes the early church to be a mirage to the current church. But you see, church, I encourage us today that you have Christ Jesus. Christ is enough and in him we are okay. Anything else that paints him off is a scam. Many things we are competing, sorry, many things are competing for us. And therefore we should rest in the truth that Christ is all we need. Christ is all we want. Christ is all we have for our living and we will do well. Because he came and was born in a manger. When some of us were born in level 5 hospitals, the son of man was born in a manger, in swaddling clothes. Some of you are in big hospitals. You are in amazing wards when you are an infant. But Christ Jesus humbling was born and was raised in a manger, in swaddling clothes. Please check what a manger is. Just go where a cow sleeps and hear the smell and you'll know where the son of man was born. Mm. You know, some of you are born and there's powder, there's cassons, there's everything. Kuna powder, kila cassons, kuna... And everything was there. Pampas, paket mkubwa. And, and, and you know, I don't know. All those things, napkins, a whole sack. But the son of man was born in a manger. He was the best of and branded the carpenter's son. Some will say, is, it, is this not the son of the, the, the carpenter we see in Nazareth? Joseph the carpenter. Is he not the son? He was called Rabbi and re- refused by saying, I'm not Rabbi. My father is great, the greatest teacher. He was humble. He was surrounded by poor and lowly people, many of which were fishermen. But some of us are working with big people. He, your pastor is a lawyer. Where? Mm-hmm. Big people. But him, he was working with fishermen. Hallelujah. If, as if this is not enough. He went straight to the cross to die for our sins. And when we, when all had thought that it was done, he came up again in power now he rules now he's he has all to say he commands all the realms actually a time will come and he will close all the spiritual realms and say finished you don't need to pray come home i do away with the ones i'm doing with and then come we enjoy with those i'm going to enjoy with so that time will come he has all he's all in all bonus if you right now you don't need to have him you just need to say in the name of jesus and things run away from you Praise the name of the Lord. Are you getting me? So Christ is enough. Why do we always think we need something else to, to make us feel nice or make us do better? He's all we need. He's all we have. He's all who can make us to be what we want to be. 
just the perfect plan for us. Christ is enough. And that's why Paul says the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. And you see, this faith is in Christ Jesus. And so he's all we need. He is enough for us. See, Galatians were thinking, no, professing Christ is not enough. We need to be to do something extra, getting circumcised. Hallelujah, church. So Christ is enough. He is enough. He is enough. The last lesson I will share tonight is that falling down begins small. Or rather what I call now the a little yeast. Verse 7 to 12. The Bible says that you are running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. Now you see, Paul wonders why the Galatians were falling off balance when they had been doing very well. These guys were amazing, they were growing, they were filled with the Spirit, they were growing very nicely. And now he was wondering what happened. Actually, there's a point he mentions to them, who bewitched you? You foolish Galatians. Actually, he calls them foolish because he's wondering, I, I didn't expect that from you. You, seriously, how could you do that? How are you embracing those things? And you've been good people all this time. And see, Paul is confident that the kind of persuasion that is making them not to obey the truth was not from the Lord. He now uses the term, a little yeast works through the whole town. What Paul is saying is that this light mistakes of the Galatians thinking con- um, uh, concerning the whole issue of how salvation comes will destroy their faith in totality. He gets agitated of the people who are misleading the Galatians and he's so hard on them and actually saying, the people who are leading you astray, for sure they will pay for this. What am I trying to see? Paul is saying, this small issue you are debating about circumcision, it's neither here nor there, but because you are taking it so strongly that way, it is going to bring your faith to a wreckage. You will be like a titanic, you will sink very soon. Have you ever been told, Betinyambura vile umeanza, vile umea, umeanza. To their parents, their old parents, and Asian parents, they will, Maknil vile umeanza. And you see, maybe the mother was washing utensils or picking a plate. Maknil, will you meanza? Then she goes away. It's the same thing Paul is telling them. Will you meanza? Nini? I, Paul, I submit to you. Will you meanza? Sijui. That's how they say. So in African culture, parents are like, I don't want to say anything bad about my child. So they just say, will you meanza? Sijui. They will attack you. They will attack you. They will attack you. Sijui, praise the Lord. It's exactly what Paul is telling them that the way you've begun, the things you are, you are thinking that circumcision is good. You are falling away from the teachings I taught you. You think that Christ that you received and the spirit you received is not enough. And therefore, these other agitators, these Judaizers are telling you that you need to be circumcised. That thing you are embracing, now I'm beer. Mimi Paulo, mutume wa Yesu, nilitumwa kwenyu, ninawambia, vile meanza. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. The kind of message and the picture he's painting is like is, is that it's just a while. It looks as a minor thing, but very soon it's going to put your faith in wreckage. You will not look like believers. Have you ever seen somebody who got saved and you're like, oh my, what happened to my friend who got saved? He was on fire. If you ask them what happened, it's not a big thing. A little yeast. Praise the Lord. And you see many saints and giants in faith who have fallen down, did not fall down on a single day as Bernard was teaching us the other time. It happened slowly and no sooner had they wanted to exercise few things of faith than they realized they have no strength at all. The Galatians were sliding away from faith in a slow manner and Paul warned them that it could cost them the whole of their faith. And see the little things we do away from faith and at times we sanitize ourselves. I love how our hospitality leader Jemo comes in, bashes, so he eats and then does. Jemo koko, amen, dear cow. So he eats and says, Atas chakula. My own, Jemo. Atas chakula. I want to pangu some tomato, where's Jemo? Ameku? Amekula. Wana kwanga amekula. Wana sviu sana. It's exactly what Paul is telling the church in Galatia. 
that these things you are doing and then you say hata sijafanya kitu umba oh maana kitu nimefanya hata sijafanya he's telling them these things you are doing just a little while a little while and your faith will be so messed up you see um we do slight mistakes yes the lord can forgive us but you see again at times we live with packages of consequences that are so heavy on us until we die yet we could have avoided them blessed be the name of the lord and some of us have no authority over some things because we are guilty of the wrongs we have committed in the past and the wrong things we did we just a little yeasted others we just are sliding off slowly and it's a matter of time you see this is the same paul who urges us to run the race and keep the feet so that we end up well lest we have too much of all we want but in our old age we could be sitting down looking at the setting of the sun and we are saying the mistakes i did ah if only that i would have waited a little bit longer this son of mine who is a gangster now this one who threatens me will not be in existence Ah, if only I'd have taken time to be a little bit patient. I think that employer would have held me on board for a little bit longer. But a little yeast, a little yeast. Ah, ni, ni mnajifanya anga sana hapa jumko, mmemploy watu. Ah, okay. Okay. Unaandikiwa una eh? You've not seen anyone in the Bible where the Bible says servants submit to your masters you've not seen all those things a little yeast and some of it happens because we are ignorant we uh, don't know god's word and and we just find ourselves in wreckage praise the lord hallelujah church so could we check our practices why do you do things the things you why do you do the things you do and how uh, why do you do the way you do them and then Beware keep reminding yourself that you have Christ he is enough and finally beware that falling down begins with small things you don't need to do a whole empire of evil for you to be evil you just need to do one slight mistake at the prick of a needle and you will be really in struggle so shall we just you know fit and make a prayer and then we'll wind up this series tonight um it's time actually um i, I don't know it, it's a personal prayer moment you could uh, take a stroll over the streets of your soul and um <laughs> are there things that you at times you'll say in is poacha hi nitakutwa na yesu siku moja um it could not be evil it could, it could be just even small things that make you not even exploit your potential you end up lazy you don't achieve much as the lord gives you strength a little yeast the small things that pull down big people yes and so we can make a prayer tonight just speak to god Jesus Baraka zako siwe na mimi oh. mapenzi yako bwana yawe na mimi and 
you know, Peter, just as we finish this. Barakaza, we can stand up. Ziwe na mimi. Mapenzi yako, mapenzi yako. Oyawe na mimi. Oh, kwa mkono wangu. Kweli, umeni bariki.
that are troubling her are troubling us too and we can't take this for granted and so we commit her to you will you not release your able hand that is able to save will you not release your power that is able to move things unimaginable touching her life oh god in the name of jesus we pray that your grace will rest upon her oh god answering all the questions she has for life answering all the dilemmas she has oh god be their pains you will take them away be their dilemmas you scrub them away and release your favor and release your power and release your healing and amazing grace upon her life oh god in the mighty name of jesus so we commit her to you we place her in your able hands that are able to save to the uttermost so we pray you will keep her well in the name of jesus and yet again tonight god we are grateful for your word that you talk you spoke to us we are grateful we pray that lord we will not allow a little yeast in our lives to live in the whole doubt so that we will be in a wreck so we pray that we will keep faith we will keep strong we will keep focused oh god looking to it that when you come to take your church to glory we will be counted among them who will go with you to dine with you in eternity to enjoy the freedom that uh, we are having here on earth extended in the heavenly places we pray that lord you will keep us well yes there are things that pull us back there are things that pull us back god we pray we pray that you will give us strength yes you will release your strength and your spirit to give us energy to overcome yes overcoming every evil and every force of the enemy and bringing breaking down every walls and every small things that will emasculate us of faith so that we will declare we will declare in strength we pray that you will strengthen us when we feel we will be angry you will fill us with joy when we feel we are giving up you will give us more reason to press on when we feel like things are not working out we will push on until they happen oh god when we are discouraged you will pick us up oh god and give us strength to be victorious in you and so we pray that you will help us oh god in the name of jesus and we appreciate for teaching us many lessons through the book of galatians we are grateful as a fellowship and so keep us well and lift us up we pray in the name of Jesus thank you for your worthy and there is none like you that is our prayer in Jesus name amen 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 can I appreciate God thank you thank you thank you would you have your seat for a minute just a minute and we aren't keeping you who's coming for the first time check around see if there's any visitor and so that we give them a hug a holy hug hallelujah praise the lord any visitor in our midst thank you thank you thank you thank you for coming the lord bless you and do you good welcome for a cup of uh, coffee as you share with one another please don't be in a hurry to leave don't leave that coffee to us as we say before but just busy backing so thank you welcome for a cup of coffee the lord bless you and do you good may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.